So thank you very much for being with us today. I would like to understand, first of all, how many people um, need assistance right now in Gaza and what is the percentage of population? Thank you. Well, uh, the situation is quite catastrophic uh, now in Gaza. I would say everybody needs assistance. More than 2 million people need assistance. We have uh, witnessed massive displacement of people over the last two weeks. Uh, 600,000 of them are now sheltering in uh, UNRWA schools. Uh, UNRWA is the United Nations Agency for Palestine Refugees. And we have seen a massive displacement to our facilities, trying to seek protection and trying to uh, get their basic needs of food and water. How many of uh, these two or two and a half or three millions are now uh, out of their homes? It's very difficult to know the exact number because that keeps of uh, that keeps changing, and in fact, we have seen over the last twenty four hours a slight increase of three and a half percent more people getting into our shelters. But we estimate that more than a million people have got this place. What do you know about AIDS? We understand that there there are some trucks on roads on custom. Uh, do you know how many trucks are now uh, on the custom waiting to enter in Gaza Strip? We know that uh, over the weekend, 34 trucks enter the Gaza Strip. This is clearly insufficient. We know that there are trucks waiting. We, we have been requesting and calling for humanitarian aid to urgently enter the Gaza Strip. We are talking about food, medicine, water, but most importantly, fuel. Why am I speaking about fuel? Because without fuel, you have no electricity. Without electricity, bakeries do not work. It is not possible uh, to get hospitals and our own installations working. You cannot pump water from wells or you cannot uh, get potable water from desalinization plants. So fuel is essential. Medicines and food stocks are getting depleted. We see it on our own, our shelters on a daily basis that the chronic patients need to get their medications and we are lacking the basics like paracetamol, insulin, antibiotics. Uh, you said about food. There is an information that came from IDF. They say that there is enough food in Gaza Strip, but it detained by Hamas. What do you know about that? I do not know about the whole situation in the Gaza Strip, but I can speak for what we know on our own agency. And we know that we have fuel left for the next 48 hours. And after that, we don't know how we are going to operate our clinics and our installations. We also do not know whether we will be able to have enough fuel for our trucks to deliver aid or to pick up aid. So we are extremely concerned, especially about the water situation. No fuel means no water. And no water means that we will see people contracting waterborne diseases because they are drinking dirty water. So imagine what this means, for example, for elderly people, for pregnant uh, women or lactating women, for children, when they have to drink dirty contaminated water. You said about aid that is now on the border. Do you understand, could you explain me who, um, uh, I, I mean, uh, who is blocking the access of this aid to Gaza Strip? My understanding is that uh, um, the international community in coordination with the various uh, governments and uh, um, um, humanitarian organizations have been exerting the highest level of diplomatic efforts to get aid in. But aid needs to be uh, scrutinized and monitored to guarantee that the, uh, what is getting into Gaza is humanitarian uh, aid. Perhaps the delay comes from there. What we know is that in the past, we used to have uh, 500 trucks entering the Gaza Strip on a daily basis and 45 of them used to be fuel trucks. 
and now we are getting really very, very little. It's like a drop in the ocean. If you think of needs for 2 million people or over 2 million people, we should also remember that Gaza was under blockage. So the aid that was entering Gaza before the crisis was already not enough. Yeah, my question were more about who is blocking this aid is about uh, uh, it's um, Israel or Egypt, because I understand it's the Rafah uh, border who you try to enter in uh, Gaza Strip. I don't have this information, but the uh, aid is being coordinated uh, with Egypt and Israel. Uh, what is the updated figures about how many people died uh, since October 7th? And how many people are wounded uh, since then? Figures keep on changing. The situation is very fluid. We know that uh, over 4,000 people have died. Many are children, uh, and including uh, our own staff. Uh, we have uh, regretfully to uh, also record that 35 of our own staff have been killed. And uh, these are uh, ordinary people. We are talking about teachers, doctors, support staff, psychologists that have also been killed uh, either in their homes or while they were doing their work. Uh, do you have the information how they have been killed? I mean, by bombing, they're abducted? In normal circumstances, what we would do is to investigate how people have died, but the safety and security in the area is uh, is it, it's really dangerous to move within the Gaza Strip. Uh, so what we know from what our colleagues have told us is that many uh, have died uh, because of uh, strikes on their homes. Some people were rescued under the rubble. So it's very difficult to know every single case, but until now, what we know, at least when it comes to humanitarian workers that work for uh, the United Nations uh, Agency for Palestinian Refugees is that we have lost 35 of our colleagues. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, condolences. Uh, they are abducting people in the Gaza Strip right now. Do you know something about that or is just bombing? I haven't heard of uh, this. I, I cannot share more information because I don't have it. And um, what are the living conditions in Gaza Strip? What people uh, need to do to survive? It is very difficult. Precisely what we see is that the, the very basic needs that a human being has, like for example, water, is not being met. Uh, when you have to live with three liters of water per day to do everything, cooking, drinking, and uh, washing yourself, this is not enough. This is way below international standards of water needs. We see many pregnant women in our shelters uh, that are very, very afraid because they are about to give birth. How can anybody give birth in these conditions? We see children that are traumatized. We, we should not forget that the, before this crisis started, many of these children were already traumatized. This is not the first crisis. Perhaps it's a crisis with, which is unprecedented if you compare it to previous uh, wars. So many children were traumatized and they asked themselves why this is happening to us. We have colleagues telling us that some of the children have stopped talking they have been asked to identify the corpses of their parents. This is horrific. So we see a lot of trauma. We see anxiety, panic attacks. We see people suffering. And uh, we see people that are not able to continue their lives. Uh, what we are doing is providing uh, psychosocial support to the extent possible. Of course, we cannot do it uh, through telemedicine, that this is the way we used to do it before because there is no electricity. But we are also providing bread to bake a uh, wheat to bakeries uh, so that they are able to distribute uh, at least once a day bread for displaced uh, people. What is the biggest risk for the people that are now in the Gaza Strip? 
I would say first and foremost is uh, survival. They need the, the very basic, I have already mentioned it, food and water, but of course, safety. This is the, re the reason why we are calling for a ceasefire, why, why we are calling for a humanitarian corridor to be open so that we can distribute aid in safe conditions and why we are asking for humanitarian aid to be scaled up. Uh, this co um, corridor will be uh, for aid trucks or for the refugees to go somewhere else. No, in crisis, uh, usually what you have is uh, humanitarian corridors so that you are able to continue humanitarian work in safe and secure, in safe conditions so that humanitarian workers can move and we can reopen, for example, our distribution centers. We should remember that before the crisis started, UNRWA was already uh, distributing through 14 distribution centers, food aid for 1.2 million people. That is more than half of the population in Gaza. So for our work to resume, uh, uh, we need safety and security and humanitarian corridors to be available. You said about ceasefire. Who should ceasefire uh, in Gaza Street? All parties should uh, agree to a ceasefire so that violence stops. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for Thank you. asking my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you.